at the Jungle Juice Bar, um, great African women in history, the mothers of civilization. So mm. it's uh, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m., 14929 Charlevoix Street in Gross Point Park, Michigan. And um, uh, uh, and this is right across the street from Detroit. So what we're going to do is, we know this is African American History Month, right? Uh, and Donald Trump did not rename it. It's been African American History Month for years. Yes. And one of the things we'll do in the beginning is talk a little bit about some of the history of African American History okay. Month. But um, now it started out as Negro History Week under Carter G. Woodson. Well, right? in 1926. Yes. And the governing body of uh, African American History Month is still the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. Mm -hmm. Most people don't know this. Mm -hmm. Most people don't know there's an annual. Theme. This year's theme is the crisis in black education. There's an annual theme going back to 1926. That's not because of Betsy DeVos, is it? Oh, no, 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 no. She is a <laughs> crisis, joking, right. and she lacks education, okay? Right. And she's the epitome of white privilege, yes. her and Donald Trump, Yes. okay? And you saw today uh, in Washington, D.C., she was blocked from entering the school by protesters, by yes. parents yes. of that school. Good. That should happen yes. everywhere she goes. Yes. That should happen everywhere she goes. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to... Um, uh, deal with different African women in our history throughout time. Some of them had natural hair. Some of them may have had no hair. Some wore perms. Some wore their mm -hmm. hair wore weaves. We'll deal with everybody from Dink Nesh, right. uh, 3.2 million years ago. Australopithecus afarensis was her classification. Europeans called her Lucy, but Dr. Yosef Ben Yakinen said that she's an African woman. She must have an African name. Mm -hmm. So he called her Dink Nesh. We'll deal with um, coming from ancient Kemet. We'll deal with Aset, who the Greeks called Isis. We'll talk about Ma'at, the personification of truth, justice, righteousness, balance, harmony, order, reciprocity. We'll deal with women like Yah Santiwa among the, uh, in Ghana, among the Shanti of Ghana, or yes. Harriet Tubman, or Ida B. Wells, yes. who I talked about yesterday. That what? is my heroine right there, Ida yes. B. Wells, who was a journalist yes. and who fearlessly fought against lynching. Well, she was a journalist, she was an educator. At one point, she was a probation officer. Uh, she was also Rosa Parks, before Rosa Parks as well, uh, refusing to give up her seat on a streetcar in Ohio. Mm -hmm. So this was a renaissance woman yes. uh, who I call one of the original ride or die chicks because at one point she carried a pistol as well right. and, she, and she advocated for all African Americans to have uh, a Winchester in their homes also. Right. Yeah. And, and justifiably so. I mean, didn't, wasn't yes. it in Memphis where she had Memphis, the newspaper? Tennessee. And they yes. didn't like what she wrote, and they burned her out. Well, Memphis, Tennessee, the the uh, the Moss Store murders uh, uh, in uh, 1892. Right. Memphis, Tennessee, yeah. And you had uh, uh, she had some African American friends who uh, one of them, uh, 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 his last name was Moss. He owned a store, and uh, a, a rival white competitor got jealous that his African-American customers were going to shop at the African-American store, right. and he sent some uh, sheriff deputies to destroy the store. Yep. Okay? So, yeah, you, you have these things that happen. Uh, so you have, we'll talk about uh, her, we'll talk about Asada Shakur, we'll talk about different African women throughout our history, and we'll, we'll deal with why it's important to deal with this type of history. Uh, oftentimes, you know, we, we'll talk a lot about the men, and that's important, right, right. but we have to bring that balance, and, and, and this is something important for our, our girls to see as well, and, and, and our boys. I mean, but especially for our girls to see, because the the images that are being fed to them through the television uh, uh, put too much emphasis on their beauty uh, or what European the European yes, standard yes. of beauty and sexuality. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need to see these women. We'll talk about scientists like uh, or mathematicians like uh, Catherine Johnson, who, yes. the, who the film Hidden Colors is partly based upon. Yes, you know. Uh, so it's a, it's a lot. So this is taking place tomorrow, Saturday, uh, February eleventh. 2017, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Jungle Juice Bar, 14929 Charlevoix Street in Gross Point Park, Michigan. Uh, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Right. Free event. Information is at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Let, let me ask you this, Michael. Let me ask yes. this, Michael. Yes. Well, we got some calls, and we're going to get to them, too. Okay. By the way, our number is 313-209-9000. Yes. What is the best way for someone who wants to become as learned as you, my friend, <laughs> about our history? What is the best way for them to get started? I've always heard right. that the uh, miseducation of the Negro is a good place that's, to start. That's a good place to start, Dr. Carter G. Woodson. They may want to read Nile Valley Contributions to Civilization by Tony Browder. Uh, fantastic, fantastic book. I know uh, Tony have interviewed him a number of times. They may want to start with a, 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 a smaller book called How White Folks Got So Rich, The Untold Story of America. 
American White Supremacy, which is a, a book put out by the Nation of Islam Research Group, a fantastic book. Uh, they may want to start with the autobiography of Malcolm X. That was one of the first books I read back in 1992. Mm -hmm. I was at Wayne State. Supposed, I was supposed to be studying for finals, and I couldn't put that <laughs> book down, man. That book blew my mind. Right. The autobiography well, well, of Malcolm I you, X. I hope you passed the class, though. Yeah, I passed the okay. class, and I graduated <laughs> also, man. It took me five and a half years, but I, gra I graduated. <laughs> man, please, you were ahead of time, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you, you, you can you can start there. You may start with uh, Christopher Columbus and the African Holocaust, slavery and the rise of European capitalism by Dr. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, John Henry Clark. But if people go to our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, we have a recommended reading list of 58 books at our website. Oh, wonderful! So, so it make it easy for you. We have a recommended wonderful. reading list of 58 books, and right. you can you can start with any one. What of those. books have you put out, Michael M. Hotel? I haven't written any books yet. I've written about 50 articles. You can read all of my articles at my website as well. I have 30 lectures on DVD. I have 700 podcasted episodes of my radio shows for the past seven years. Uh, I've done all that. I've done national radio, local radio. Right. Uh, I have the research done for a book. I just got to find the time find the to time do it. Yeah, because I started on one back in college. Right. And it got about 100 pages done. <laughs> <laughs> when you come out with that book, you yes. give me a call because I want to definitely read the book Yes, and then have you on so we can discuss it. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. All man. right. We'll do that. Let's go to the phone lines. We got Gary on line two. Hey, Gary, good afternoon to you. You're on with Michael M. Hotel. Yes, how you doing? Hey, good. how you doing, Gary? You all right? Good. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. I, um, um, the other day I was listening to, uh, I think, Sharon doing the show, and she, she brought on this young lady. That um, is running against the mayor. Okay. Is against, so when you were talking about about you know women um, in Negro history or Black history, right? Uh, not not Negro history, <laughs> right? But but um, would you say that she's one of the youngest that's ever run run for a public office like this? Is that the one that's twenty two years old? 22 years. Yeah, I, I think she may be one of the youngest uh, who's ever run. I think she may be. Mm -hmm. right. Run for mayor, yes. The reason I'm mentioning her is because of it. I, 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 like, I like some of the things she said. Mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the things that I thought of that I thought was kind of funny was Donald Trump said, he said, uh, I guess every time we have a show, we can never stop. We can't, we can't have a show where we don't talk about Donald Trump on. Well, <laughs> well, you know what? It has a white. As far as I'm concerned, because I'm guilty of that, Donald Donald Trump in the White House constitutes a crisis that cannot be talked about enough. Right. And every right. single day there are new lies, new revelations. <laughs> Look at what's going on with General and Mike so Flynn I, right now. I don't think we can afford not to talk about Donald Trump right now. Right. But you know, you know what I heard one guy say? What he said? He said Donald Trump really gets free ears. He got free publicity to run. How could he not win because he got free publicity? Oh. Donald well, he, Trump did not publicity. win because of his publicity. <laughs> he ran because he got rushing about, but he did get over two billion dollars worth of uh, free media time. Right, that's true. But it, it was Russian hacking, voter suppression. Yeah, thank you. It, it, thank it, you. And, and that's because what. And, and the voter that, suppression is right. something that mainstream media doesn't want to talk and, about. And a, lot. a good portion of that free media time was negative media against Donald Trump because he yes. was buck wild yes. and was lying and yes. doing things that were almost unprecedented. Exactly. Exactly. That, that's that's too good. That's too, Michael. Yeah. But he, he said so much crazy stuff that people couldn't help but talk about it. But. Well, that's what they say. Some people say that's what they say, and, yeah. and he survived it. So, yeah, it, it, yeah, right. but yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Well, man, I appreciate the call. And uh, no, no. Oh, I thought you made your point, man. <laughs> We've been on the phone for a long yeah, time. Yeah, I thought he made his. <laughs> Go right ahead, Gary. Make your point. We talking about the other stuff, but one of the things he said that really took me was he said he said. I want the African Americans, Afro Americans. I can't. I, I'm not. I'm not. Um, African Americans. Yeah. Said, Go ahead. But, uh, but for us to vote for him, he says, "What do you have to lose?" Right. Uh, right. In, in other words, we don't. We don't have no money, and we, we don't get no contracts, and we get nowhere anyway. Might as well vote for him. You ain't got nothing. What do you have to lose? Well, and he was lying then also because he provided right. no real substance, substance to policies, right. and he was lying then as well. Absolutely. That's true. But, I thought about that when I when I was listening to this this little black girl running for uh, right 
Uh, really against, uh, you know, the, the, the mayor we got now. Right. Yeah. He has to, I don't really see what he's done, done for us. Well, now that's an interesting point. I, I tell you what, save that conversation. <laughs> I appreciate the call, Gary, because we will have that, uh, the, we will definitely have that conversation as we get closer to the mayoral race. Should I, should I go to Walter? Yes. Uh, if you want to. <laughs> you didn't answer my question. Oh, should you go to what? You can go to Walter. That's I fine. know I can. You I'm didn't answer my question. Oh, no, Walter, can, we can go to Walter. All right. Walter, how you doing this <laughs> afternoon? You're on with Mike William Holtup and me. The voice of opposition has arisen again. Which one of us are you talking about? I think he's talking about himself. You got, you got, you got, you got both of y'all together. Right, right. Of, of, of well, course, well, of course well, that could be you, though. Well, you well, well, what's going on? You should oppose it. Right. You should oppose it if you have any sense well, what's what, going what, on. What, what point do you want to make, Walter? I, I, I got to let you do your thing before I get back to Mike and Hotel. Well, I'm going to have some fun with this one. And I want you guys both. I know you guys claim to be Christian. I know you're Christian. You've never heard me claim anything about my religion at all. Yeah, you so never, you never heard me right. claim to be Christian, so okay. I don't know who you've been and, talking and, to. And, and I say that not saying that I am or am not. I'm just saying that my relationship with God is mine, and I don't discuss that on the radio. <laughs> but go right ahead. Okay, okay. Get your hand. I want you guys both. The Bible says lift up your hands without wrath and doubt. Get the hands up right now and praise God for the mighty great things of Donald Trump. Jeff Fletcher confirmed and... What's her name, the education lady? Well, you know what? The, 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 the miseducation lady, Betsy DeVos. That, that, yeah. that, 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 book, that book also says, I will fear no evil. And that might apply to Donald Trump as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the, the book also says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free exactly. as well. But some, but some Negroes don't want to be free. Some Negroes don't want to be, want to be, want to be free, though. Go ahead and make your point so you can go. Michael, John chapter 8, verse 30, 31, does not set you free, says make you free. Make you free, yeah. But, but, but a lot of Negroes don't want to be free because they have to think for themselves. But thanks for calling in and showing us white supremacy still lives. Thanks, Walter. <laughs> Walter, I mean, this is my show and Mike just dismissed you. I ain't dismiss him. He just, he, well, he's gone now. I just he hung up on him. <laughs> I ain't dismiss him. I'm sorry, what, I ain't dismiss him, Let's go to Scotty real quick. You know, you got you, you you the PBWKs that call in, man. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking wait, about. Wait. Scotty, how you doing this afternoon? <laughs> Thanks for calling. Okay, welcome. Well, good. Thank you for coming. This call might be kind of a sad thing that uh, Ronald Reagan and uh, his name, uh, out of the North, kind of pulled. He might be kind of pulled the same thing. Like what? Wow. What thing? What thing? What, what are you referring to? To the oh, oh, weapons and contra. Well, yeah. and and then and then distributing cocaine throughout right, neighborhoods right, 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 right. In, in, in the cities. I, I, I think with Trump, it's going to be something on a whole nother level. When the six U.S. intelligence intelligence agencies right now are investigating Trump and the people around him, their relationship to Russia. Okay, so when that uh, this is going to be bigger than Watergate. When all this stuff actually comes out. This is going. You see what's going on with, with uh, retired Lieutenant General Mike Flynn right now. Yes. Okay. And I've been telling people for months, Russia's behind the hacking, talking about Trump's relationships to Russia, all this stuff. All this stuff is going to come out. And we found out a month ago on a Tuesday when FBI Director James Comey testified in front of the U.S. Senate, we found that Russia did hack the RNC's emails, but they were old email addresses they yes. weren't still using, and they, would, and they did not release those emails either. Yes. He testified in front of the U.S. Senate about that. Yes. It's a whole lot that's about to come out. Absolutely. We don't have a lot of time. Tell us about what's going on with you and uh, black yes. women, African-American women in their history. This okay, weekend. so tomorrow... Um, uh, Jungle Juice Bar, 14929 Charlevoix Street in Girls Point Park, Michigan. I'm um, doing a presentation, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Great African Women in History, the Mothers of Civilization. It's a free event, donations accepted. We'll, do, uh, we'll talk about a number of African women throughout our history uh, as well. This is part of uh, African American History Month, our lecture series. And then also on Sunday, I'm doing a live international webinar so people around the country can tune into the live international webinar as well. I'll be doing a version of that presentation uh, from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Why, why are you so passionate about this Michael M. Hotel? 
Well, I understand what happens when people don't understand their history. Uh, Walter's a perfect example of that. And I understand, uh, I've been studying history for 25 years. Uh, so what you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you is based upon what you think about yourself. Every ethnic group in America, for the most part, have their history and culture intact. They use it to fight for scarce wealth, power, and resources. And it's your history and culture that gives you your VIPs, your values, your interests, and your principles mm -hmm. that influences your economic empowerment and your political empowerment. So I, I have a, a thorough understanding of what happens when you have it and what happens when you don't. So people can visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, information about the lecture tomorrow at the Jungle Juice Bar and the international webinar on Sunday are there. You can also give us a call, 313-462-0003, 313-462-0003. And uh, listen to the uh, African History Network show every Sunday, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on 9, 10 a.m., the Superstation. All right. Any final thoughts you want to leave us with, Michael and Holtep? We uh, have, what, less than 60 seconds now. Uh, listen to the shows here on the network. Listen to Cliff Russell's show. Things are going to get much worse before they get better. Download Indivisible Guide. Go to IndivisibleGuide.com. Download the Indivisible Guide. These mass protests you see across the country, people are organizing because of the Indivisible Guide, and they're uh, uh, holding uh, elected officials accountable. You see what happened last night in Utah, Representative yes. Jason Chaffetz. Yes. He almost got his behind handed to him by those yes. people. And he's not going to have a job come November 6, 2018 when the midterm elections take place. Yes. All 435 seats in the U.S. House of Representatives are up and 35 seats in the U.S. Senate. Save that thought. We'll have that conversation later. Mike and Hope have always yes. good to talk to you, my friend. You too, man. Great presentation Thanks. tomorrow and I look forward Absolutely. to talking to you again. All right, Cliff. Thank you. All right. We're going to take a break. When we come back. we got more information to share with you, and we want to hear from you at 313-209-9000. This is 910 AM, the Superstation, the voice of Detroit. Argued ...that she be allowed to stay in Ohio to be tried for murder. She'd rather stay there and be tried for murder than go back to the slave states, and they negotiated, and her former owner said, well, look, if you let her come back, then I'll let her be extradited. Of course, he lied. She went down south. She was sold to someone else, I believe and never heard from again. I was fascinated by that story, and it made me dig deeper and deeper. Right. And since we got Michael M. Holtep here in the studio right now, we're going to uncover some other hidden gems during this <laughs> African-American history month. Well, well, you know, that wasn't the uh, only case of uh, someone committing, uh, when it's an a infant, they call right. it an infant side. Um, when you look, when you study Nat Turner, uh, his mother tried to kill him when he was an infant also. Because from what mm -hmm. we know about his mother, his mother was from Haiti. And, and, and his mother came to the U.S. along with uh, her slave master uh, in the 1790s. And that's during the Haitian Revolution. Okay, so we see when you study Nat Turner, in that Turner Rebellion of 1831 in Southampton County, Virginia, you see that uh, uh, most likely his mother taught him to hate slavery. And also, we mm -hmm. know that his father ran away to be free and left his family behind, and we don't know what happened to his father after mm -hmm. that. You know, so, yeah, you have these uh, various types of stories. One good book uh, is um, Before the Mayflower by Lerone Bennett, Jr. I actually read that in college. Yes, yes. yes. Yes, and uh, that's, a, that's a fantastic book. Uh, that's a good uh, early book for people to read dealing with our history. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you, you, I mean, you, you have these stories, and you have these stories of various types of resistance all throughout our history, and not just in this country, but in Haiti, Cuba, Jamaica. Jamaica is where you have Queen Nanny and the Jamaican Maroons fighting against the British, mm -hmm. and, they, and they beat the British so badly they force them into a, a peace treaty in 1739, and the British give them like hundreds of acres of land. You know, these are the Maroons, you know, uh, uh, Nanny is uh, from the Akan people, oh, she's Ashanti from uh, the Akan people of uh, Ghana. Mm -hmm. And um, when, you, when you look at these um, African people taken in the Caribbean, well, first of all, it's important to note that 70% of the people Columbus came in contact with on his four voyages uh, were African people. And Jamaica is, is one of the um, uh, islands yes. that uh, Columbus came across in his four voyages. Uh, so if people read the uh, First Americans Were Africans documented evidence by Dr. David M. Hotel, he deals with a lot of this information. But you're going to see these rebellions and these fights all throughout the Caribbean, wherever African people were taken. You're going to see us fighting for our freedom. Mm -hmm. Is it true, I've also heard this, Michael and Hotel, that there were hundreds upon hundreds of planned slave revolts 
in this country. But the majority of them, certainly a lot of them, were thwarted mm -hmm. by, I don't know if you want to call them sambos or coons <laughs> or, or, or turncoats, He's but <laughs> other blacks who were so uh, afraid to offend master and to attack master right. that they turned the other black folks in. Yeah, you, you're going to have uh, about 250 slave revolts that take place. Most of them are going to be thwarted. Uh, the Nat Turner Rebellion was the most successful one. That, got, that actually got off the ground. That was in Southampton County, Virginia, 1831. In 1800, you have the Gabriel Prosser uh, mm -hmm. Rebellion, but that's thwarted. That does not get off the ground. Right. And one of the things that scared the people in Virginia so much was they remembered the plot with Gabriel Prosser, and this one with Nat Turner actually got off the ground. They ended up killing about 65 white people. But they did not know how widespread the rebellion was and yes. who was involved. Yes. So they're going around torturing African Americans, killing them one day, 200 African Americans are killed. Um, trying to find out how widespread is this rebellion. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you're going to have, and what happened, one of the things that happened in 1710, the county of Virginia, Dr. Claude Anderson, is one of my teachers, talks about this, uh, Meritor's Manumission. Yes. And Meritor's Manumission was a way for uh, the enslaved African people to gain their freedom if they told on somebody who's trying to plan a slave revolt, or if they saved the white person's life, or if they in invented something that white people can make money off of. So, um, even in that oppression, you, you, you're still going to have uh, various uh, right. slave resistance movements. I mean, we, we've got meritorious manumissions going on around here today. Oh, so you're right about that, man. <laughs> and you got you got yeah, you get you have uncompensated meritorious manumission because you got some people coming right. to these shows who who are not getting paid, but still you uh, professional white behind kisses. Right. You know, so they're not getting compensated, but they're so programmed right. to uphold right. white supremacy, they they can't do. They just have to Let's show that they're still loyal. Let me share this theory I have with you, too, Michael and Moses, and I always appreciate these conversations. Yeah, me too. Thank you. I heard that at one time in uh, South Carolina in particular, mm -hmm. you had twice as many Africans in the state as you had white people with all of the slavery that was going on there. Mm -hmm. And so there was always this palpable fear right. that whites had that, you know what? One day these blacks may be turn may turn on us. As a matter of fact, <laughs> in the movie Django, you right. may recall that Calvin Candy said, I always ask the question, why don't they kill us? Right, right. Well, my understanding is that when you had Nat Turner, when you had Prosser, Denmark, Vesey, others, mm -hmm. this created such an ongoing fear right. among whites that essentially we still have that today. You have scores of whites in various parts of the country mm -hmm. who really don't have much contact with black folks. Right. But their fear, which is stoked by television accounts and reports and things in the media, right. but their fear is so great that they operate out of fear of us, even though they don't even really encounter us. Well, yeah, you know, you, you um, when you look at the uh, southern states and, and, and the... Um, uh, electoral college plays a part in this, right? So, um, it's electoral college goes back to 1787 with the Constitution, uh, U.S. Constitution with the drafting of it. Um, a, a lot of the southern states, uh, they were outnumbered by by those enslaved African people, and this is one of the reasons why they had the, uh, the they took the first census in 1790 mm -hmm. because they realized individually some of these states there were more African people than uh, than those enslaved, and and, it, and the reason why was because one of the reasons why was because the, the majority of the wealth was in the South, number one. That's where the majority of the plantations were, number one. But number two, also, you had, that gave them more political power because the, um, uh, the, the, the number of seats in the U.S. House of Representatives that southern states had was based upon total population. Right. Okay, and this is what the uh, um, Three-Fifths Compromise of 1787 was about because it counted the enslaved African people. They, they counted three-fifths of the population. They didn't, they didn't count them as three-fifths of a human being. That's a misunderstanding mm -hmm. of Article One, Section 2, Clause 3 of the U.S. Constitution, which is known as the Compromise of 1787. But it said for the purpose of taxation and uh, apportionment that three-fifths of the population of those in right. bondage would be counted. Because in reality, we mm -hmm. were zero percent of a person in the eyes of a lot of the folks. Well, yeah, yeah, in the eyes of a lot of us. 
we were genetically inferior and not right. even considered to be human. We were more like a cow or a horse right. and chattel. Right, but, the, but the, what they were trying to figure out, because, see, the North was saying, okay, well, wait a second. If you count the full population, the total population of the South, that's going to give you a dominance in the U.S. House of Representatives, okay? The South is saying, wait a second, you have to count these enslaved African people also. So in a lot of Northern states, the North had more free people, but the South had more free and right. enslaved people. Right. So that's how you get this three fifth compromise. Because they're trying to they're going back and forth trying to figure out how do we count this enslaved population. Some people right. say count half of them. Some people say count three quarters. So they decided to count three fifths right. of that enslaved population. So that gave the, the South also an incentive to keep slavery intact as well. Which may be the height of hypocrisy because these folks had no vote voting power, no property rights, right. but they were counted politically. Oh yeah, to 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 benefit to, to benefit the slave owner exactly, yes. and then the electoral college then plays a part in that because the electoral college then also gave um, uh, the southern states an incentive to keep slavery intact. But yes. if you look at the, the Nat Turner Rebellion of eighteen thirty one, it almost ended slavery in the state of Virginia. Yes, it all because the the state legislature voted on this and they decided to keep it, by a slim margin decided to keep it intact. But it almost ended slavery in the state of Virginia. Interesting. We got a caller on the line. It is snow on line one. Snow, thanks for I, calling. You're with I Mike you were going to say it's snow outside. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> snow, how you doing this afternoon? How you doing? Well, that Mike Pence said National Freedom Day, but um, it, it, yeah, well, Mike Pence said National Freedom Day. Mike Pence, uh, vice president, and he's from Indiana, uh, the state that has illegal gun. Uh, I'm not familiar with that. I, I know, I know uh, Vice President Mike Pence did a tweet uh, for African American History Month. And he celebrated Abraham Lincoln, right. who he said uh, uh, signed in the law of the uh, um, 13th Amendment. And he said, hashtag National Freedom Day. Right. Yeah, he, cel he celebrated African American History Month by celebrating a white man. Oh, oh, oh well, well, <laughs> well, did you hear, and I'm sure you did, did you hear Donald Trump's comments yeah. about Frederick Douglass? Well, he, 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 it seemed like he didn't know Frederick Douglass died in 1895. I, right, exactly. I, I and talked he, about this. He probably couldn't tell you right. two or three things Frederick Douglass had done. Well, and, and, and I saw the quote, too. He was looking down at a cue card. Exactly. So, and he was still clueless. Right. <laughs> he was still he's looking at a cue card and still clueless. And he said Frederick Douglass, you know, has done an amazing job and he's getting, you know, more recognition uh, right. every day I see. Right. Where, where are you seeing right. this? Explain this to me. <laughs> then White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer, because I watch the White House uh, right. uh, press uh, press conferences almost every day. He was asked about this. I think it was April Ryan who asked him this question, uh, White House correspondent for American Urban Radio. She asked him about this. What, what did he mean by this? And he said, well, I, I think he means that uh, they're going. He, uh, Frederick Douglass is going to be recognized more in the future. Well, no, he's saying he's being recognized more and exactly. more every day. What do you mean exactly. by this? Exactly. Just total, just total number sales. There's man. not enough money in the world for me to have <laughs> Sean Spicer's job because I can't lie that much. Well, Sean Spicer's the wrong person for the job, number one. Number two, he ain't, I don't think it's going to last to the end of the year, Sean Spicer. There is no person <laughs> right for that job. <laughs> Maybe Goebbels from the old Nazi regime under Hitler, but right. he's gone now. Well, and the other thing is uh, with uh, Melissa McCarthy uh, tearing his behind up on Saturday Night yes, Live. Yes, I don't think he's going to stay in that job because Donald Trump does not like to be ridiculed like that. And yes. that's a reflection on Trump. Yes. You know, so. Yes. No doubt. So, hey. <laughs> Let's see if we can get another call or two in here before we got to get out of here. Brother right. Bomar is online, too. Brother Bomar, you're on with Brother Mike Wim Hotep. How you doing? Hey, man, you all right? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Can we get a speaker here? Can we get a help from this audio? Yeah, our struggle is unique to the fact that they considered us livestock. We're not even human beings. Yes. You know, in, in their eyes. 
Right. And, you know, you got racism all across, you know, and everybody tries to group themselves into the struggle of black people in this country, but, you know, they didn't even consider us as human beings. Well, and, and it's just been up until the last 50 years that we've gotten some form of uh, rights, you know, with voting and everything else. Well, 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 what happened was, well, well let's, keep be, let's be clear, 13th Amendment, 14th Amendment, 15th Amendment gave us rights. I mean, we were voting, uh, 15th, 15th Amendment, 1870, gave us the right to vote. What happened was in southern states, they implemented uh, uh, obstacles to voting, right. okay, uh, that 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 uh, kept us from voting. Now, were okay? those black and, codes? Uh, well, no, 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 those right. were Jim Crow laws, Jim and those Crow were laws. literacy okay. tests, all different types of things like this. So this is why you needed a Voting Rights Act in 1965, right. okay? But when you talk about racism, most people don't understand what racism is. Racism is a system of advantage and privilege distributed based upon race coming out of the ideology of white supremacy. Racism doesn't have anything to do with uh, calling people racial epithets or not liking people. Racism right. is a system of advantage and privilege right. distributed based upon race. Are we the only group of people in this country who were ever specifically legislated against in the law? It wasn't just practice or habit that there was discrimination against black folks. Mm -hmm. It was written in the law. Are we the only group of people the, the, to go through that? Yeah, to have all levels of government against us like this and, and, and coming out of 246 years of uh, slavery, decades of Jim Crow segregation, yeah, on, on that level, I mean, you're going to have it, it's, uh, uh, on, have all levels of government against us like this. Yeah, we're, we're, we're the only people like that. And we're the only right. people like that to really have our nationality stripped away from us also. Let's have another real quick call before we got to get out of here. Dave, thanks for calling. You're on with Michael M. Hotel. Hey, thanks a lot. Um, and, uh, and, and, and also, Brother Drew, my good day from too. But hey, it was Jeff, real quick. Thanks. I was talking, we were talking, we were talking, some other fellas talking. It was Abraham Lincoln after the, after the uh, uh, Civil War, where she spoke, I believe it was Frederick Douglass, and said, you know, this country, the racism is so bad, I don't think that we can join the two people together. Why not let us give you your other land? We fantasized on that a little bit and, and meditated on that. How would that have been if we would have had another place in, post in South America or Central America to where the people, we, we had the ingenuity, we had the knowledge, know how we were doing all the work. We, we, we built this country. We could have built... Uh -oh. Did we lose the caller? I think we, we lost the Okay, yeah. what he's referring to, it, it wasn't after the Civil War because uh, he was killed April, I think it was April 12th, uh, uh, 1865, before the Civil War ends. Civil War ends in June. Uh, it was 1862, uh, around 1862, he's going to have a meeting, uh, Abraham Lincoln, with uh, leading African Americans at the time, and he was contemplating uh, sending them out of the country, maybe South America, right, something like right. that. Okay, and, and you had some that <clears throat> some that didn't want to go. So much for the great man. Yeah, and, 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 and Frederick Douglass was one who, who who said we weren't going to go. Right. Okay. Uh, you had some who wanted to go, and you had some that didn't want to go. So we've had these debates for uh, over 100 years. Right. We've had these debates for over 100 years. Because certainly uh, Marcus Garvey, Mm -hmm. was able to cultivate a lot of interest in moving back Absolutely. to the African but, and, continent. Right, and, but, but, but Garvey comes from Jamaica, okay, where, where you have um, African Americans who were here, some of them former slaves like Frederick Douglass, things like this. But Garvey is able, he, uh, estimates show somewhere between four to six million uh, members in the UNIA in the 1920s. Yes. Uh, low estimates of one million, but and he had the largest folks, mass movement. The United Negro, Negro Improvement Association. Universal, Universal, Universal Negro, Negro Improvement, Improvement Association. Association. He had oh, the largest right. mass movement of our, of our people in We'd this out of country. time. Tell us what you're going to be doing tomorrow from 3 to 7 in the evening, Mike Wim Hotel. Hey, well, I'll be at the Jungle Juice Bar, 14929 Charlevoix Street, Gross Point Park, Michigan. Uh, presentations, Great African Women in History, The Mothers of Civilization. Free event, donations accepted. Bring the youth also. It's going to be fantastic. Visit AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com for more information. You can uh, call us 313-462-0003. And then on Sunday, I'll have a live webinar from 3 to 5. Uh, information is at our website also. That's for our international people, people who can't make it tomorrow. Everybody around the world can tune into the live webinar. All right. I hope you know how much we appreciate you, Brother Mike. Hey, Boy, appreciate Hotel. you too, man. Appreciate right. you too. No problem, man. Thank you. All right. Appreciate you too, Miss Pageant Atterbury. Yes, and Pageant. You as well, Miss Rachel McCracken. Yeah, Rachel. Rachel's feeling better. Rachel, Rachel's my producer, Rachel, Rachel's Rachel's my producer too, man. I know. <laughs> yeah. Just you know, a lot of love in this room right yeah. now. <laughs> uh, we're going to get out of here. I believe Karen Dumas is on deck to come up next. Is she here? Or is she not here? Oh, she's not here. Spud, brother oh, Spud. Spud.
Spud. Yeah, he, he's pinch, pinch hitting, about to ready to hit another home run. Go ahead, Spud. I'm Cliff Russell, and uh, I say it every day, and I mean it with all my heart. I do not care how much you know until I know how much you care. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, everybody. I will be back on the air this evening at 7 p.m. broadcasting the Detroit Mercy basketball game, men's yeah. basketball game against Oakland University right there at Callahan Hall. Broadcast time is at 7 p.m. I'm out of here. That's Take good. care, everybody. Go Titans. Go Titans. There we go. <laughs> 9, 10 a.m., the voice of Detroit.